We hear today in our Holy Gospel that when Jesus saw the people, he had compassion for them because they were abundant and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he turned and said to his disciples that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, please ask the master of the field to send workers for his harvest. It is surprising how much value our prayers have for God. The Lord of the harvest himself prefers to be motivated by our prayers and pleas to harvest his own field. Is it ever possible? Think about it for a moment. I wonder why we should have to remind him to reap his own field. Certainly, not because he needs our prayers to motivate him. He cares far more than we do because it is his. It is his possession. God has love and compassion for every human being as much as we, don't, we cannot have for our own children. But God wants us to be like him, to teach us to be compassionate and merciful like him so that we too can be moved and open our own hearts to love as he loves. He wants us to be able to see all the people around us, no matter how sinful, afflicted, or broken they are, the way he sees them. God sees in the face of every troubled, miserable, even the most wicked person, a person who is suffering. In contrast to our own human cruelty, that seeks to find in the sufferer an evil and wicked person. Christ sees all of humanity and he grieves. He sees us all in what a miserable spiritual state we're in and he feels sorry for us. He's sorry that he sees us suffering from head to toe. He grieves that we do not know where we head to, what our destination is. He grieves that he sees us not following him that we do not understand the true meaning of his teaching, that we cannot deny our self-centeredness. He grieves that he sees us hugging ourselves and our egos instead of hugging our fellow people. He grieves how we perceive our relationship with him and with others. Today, God wants to teach us to love, to be compassionate and merciful as he is. He wants us to become saints like him, after all, we are created to be saints. We should never forget that. We have been created in the image and likeness of God. It is certainly possible to imitate God in his almightiness, his wisdom, and his miracles. But we can constantly imitate him in his love, goodness, and mercy in our daily life, in our family, and this is our personal way to follow him in our lives. This is our spiritual responsibility and the relationship we are called to cultivate before God and people. Our own family is our apostolic vocation. It is our own personal cross, and we must hold it tightly. We are not allowed to abandon it, nor neglect it, nor hurt it. And of course, we are not allowed to break it apart. If we want to follow Christ, we are called to love like him. We are called to learn to put others before ourselves, our family, our mites, our co-workers, and every other person God sends into our lives. We are called to follow his example and love all mankind. When we choose a life of compassion, sacrifice, kindness, mercy and love, then we too walk as true apostles and proclaim the kingdom of heaven with our very lives. Even if we never manage to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers like the apostles, this life of love can work even greater miracles. This selfless love can rise up people around us who are spiritually dead. Love is above all. It is above all miracles. When we love, there is no need for any miracle. 
because love itself is the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is the deliverance of men from sin, the deliverance of men from the sinful way of thinking and living. The greatest miracle is the transformation of sinner into a righteous man. And this miracle can only be performed by this selfless love. This life of love and sacrifice is our way of placing ourselves at the service of the Lord of the harvest and becoming his partners in the salvation and transformation of people. Our example of love can help people who are suffering spiritually, who are abandoned and afflicted by the spiritual confusion that exists in this world, can lead our loved ones to draw closer to God, and can help us become true images of God, to become saints. Only by loving we can become saints, neither by fasting, nor by staying virgin, nor by keeping vigil we can be like God. The devil does all these things too, but he's nowhere near sanctification. Only if we love as God loves, only if we have compassion and see everyone and everything through his eyes. I guess this is what all the saints of our saints and the apostles of Christ that we celebrate and honor today did. They loved as God our Father loves, and the Holy Spirit rested in them and sanctified them and will sanctify all those of us who want to follow their bright example. It is worth following them. It is worth loving. It is worth becoming holy because holy people is the only reason why this planet we live on is still goes around. Amen. I